In this age of innovation, compute is the catalyst and the possibilities are limitless. The horizon looks promising, but why wait? Protect what matters, unleash what's possible, and innovate ahead of the crowd. Because when compute meets opportunity, the sky isn't the limit. It's just the beginning. Coming to you live from Hewlett Packard Enterprise HQ in Spring, Texas, the Cube is excited to be here on location, bringing you exclusive coverage of this pivotal moment in compute. Hello, Compute community, and welcome to Spring, Texas. We are here at Hewlett Packard Enterprise HQ for this thrilling broadcast. My name is Savannah Peterson. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm joined by Rob Streche, my favorite analyst and the king of compute at the Cube. <laughs> really pivotal moment for compute, Rob. It is, and I, I think again, when you look at compute with cloud native, AI, and so many new applications being brought to bear, and people looking for more efficient and secure ways to deliver that value to their customers, it, you, compute is at the center of that today. In fact, we see 50-50 split where new applications are being put on-prem versus going to the cloud, and that's only growing as the need for that data and compute power and efficiencies and security is really underlying and really driving people to rethink their infrastructure and their architecture. It absolutely is a pivotal moment in technology. And when they're thinking about that architecture and they're thinking about compute, who better to talk to us than John and Krista here from HPE. Thank you both for joining us. Oh, thanks for being here. I don't want to waste anyone's time moving forward. Krista, what are y'all announcing today? Okay, so we're super excited. So when we design ProLiance, we design around three tenets, and that's secured, optimized, and automated. And we're taking and advancing all of those. So today, we're announcing our HPE ProLiant Gen 12 portfolio, which delivers the performance, efficiency, and security that customers deserve. And I say deserve uh, for a reason. They deserve to get servers that work as hard as they do and to get an ROI on their time, their space, and their budgets. Uh, so we're super excited about this. This new generation is going to deliver more security, so top levels of security all the way down to the silicon level, performance and power efficiency. So you can't just worry about more performance and not look out for the power. We're bringing both. And then lastly, AI-driven productivity. So we have something called HPE um, uh, Compute Ops Management, and that's going to deliver more insights and time savings. And it's funny, customers are already enjoying it right now. Last year at Discover, I bumped into a customer in the hallway, and I was telling him, I was like, we got this new server, and you got to check it out. It might be good for you. And he looks at me, and he's like, I don't want it if it doesn't have HPE Compute Ops Management. I'm like, it has Compute Ops Management. And uh, so customers are enjoying it. And now we're going to reveal even more value we're delivering with, uh, to customers. So exciting. This yeah. has been quite a while in the making. Right? It has been years in the making. So the whole team's excited. Yeah, I, I think that it's really exciting to hear about the tenants and stuff. And John, let's kind of unpack what is meant by secure and security because I, I think to me that is one of the things that's going on with cybersecurity and cyber risk and some of the new regulations we were actually talking about just mm -hmm. earlier today uh, that are coming out. W what does it mean to have security built in? Yeah, you know, we've already talked about earlier some of the things that are changing in the world, but you just mentioned things like AI, right? Things like edge proliferation. And it's not a matter of if you need a more secure system at this point. It's a matter of when you're going to need it. And so we really boot up at HPE around building a security first system. And that really all centers around the innovation that goes into HPE ILO. So for those who don't know it, that's integrated lights out. And it's something that we've had for quite some time in our portfolio. It's kind of the centerpiece or the brain of everything that happens in a ProLiant system. And we've introduced some new features there. So foundationally, a few generations ago, we started talking about something called Silicon Root of Trust. And that is the ability to really start down at the physical silicon level and burn some of those values in so that you have a handshake from the physical level of the server all the way up into the firmware, up into the software to be able to secure that environment 
uh, and not have to worry about it. And that's something really unique to HPE because we actually uh, build and design our own management controller. So other vendors out there buy it off the shelf and that works fine for a lot of things, but they don't get the same kind of integration. You know, as soon as power comes on to a ProLiant server, you can trust that you're protected and that's really unique. Now, to build on top of that, what we've introduced here in Gen 12 are a couple of things. First of all, what we call a secure enclave. And so that's really an isolated environment, or like a vault, if you want to think about it that way, that allows us to securely connect into that ILO security and store things like uh, encryption keys, configuration information, all of those kind of secrets that exist in the system. And so to keep that in a separate environment gives you that one extra layer of physical protection to the actual management control plane of your system. So on top of that, we've added quantum resistant security algorithms to be able to be ready for what's next. You hear in the news every day, right? What's next after AI? And we've heard more and more about quantum. Uh, so these systems are already built to be ready for that kind of innovation. Uh, we've added protections so we meet the standards for FIPS 143 level three, uh, which we believe we're the first OEM vendor in the market to meet those requirements at the BMC, and we will be pursuing those certifications. Uh, as well as a lot of other things we do, like we don't think about even the delivery of a system, right? So we have a secure supply chain program that makes sure that we protect the customer's environment from manufacturing, through shipping, all the way delivered to their door. So a lot of great stuff we do holistically around our systems when you think about security. That's impressive. And, and that future-proof planning makes it so much easier for your community, I bet, to get excited about new products and want to invest in that and have you as a partner. Krista, let's keep building on this conversation. The term optimized mm -hmm. can be a bit of a moving target. Mm -hmm. I can imagine when you're thinking about new workloads, you're thinking about efficiency, you're thinking about power, there's a lot going on to optimize a system in this circumstance. How do you help your community and your customers wrap their head around that and how do you make sure you're delivering the most optimized experience to them? Yeah, great question. And when it comes to our latest generation servers, the performance and efficiency they deliver is pretty shocking. So if I compare one ProLiant Gen 12 to Gen 10, you would need seven Gen 10s, yes, to equal the performance of one Gen 12, yes. And wow. it doesn't cost seven times more. <laughs> <laughs> good, good caveat. Yeah, good caveat exactly. There, good save. And yeah. <laughs> you save 65% on power. And that's really just the beginning because wow. we have customers that have Gen 9 servers, double 14 to 1 ratio. And we have people that have people that have Gen 8. 26 to 1 ratio. So now you're really talking about major efficiencies in terms of space and power and not managing so many servers. And we have a lot of customers that like to, we, we have very reliable servers. So they like to hold on to them for a long time. And they're very proud. I'm very proud too, because I've been here for a long time. So I remember all those old servers. But just because you can run an old server in your data center doesn't mean that you should run an old server in your data center. And it kind of reminds me of something that I went through personally. Uh, I started taking piano lessons several years ago after not taking it for decades. And I remember the first lesson was great. I went to my teacher Linda's studio. I played on her Steinway grand piano. Oh, nice. It was fabulous. And then before the second lesson, something happened. It actually something that happened to everybody. The COVID shutdown happened. So I was stuck taking Zoom lessons from my house on my cheap Amazon keyboard. <laughs> yes. Not and exactly the same user experience. Not there. the same <laughs> user experience. And then one day my teacher said, you know, I need you to play this part regular and this part softly. And I thought to myself, my keyboard's so cheap, I can't play hard and soft. You hit the key, it's the same sound no matter how hard you hit it. So I was like, okay, I thought of something. I was like, okay, let me do this. And I played it regular, then I reached over, turned the volume down, and played the rest of it. Now, I know she could Clever see hack. me. I knew I know I wasn't exhibiting any skills whatsoever, but you know, it sounded right and there wasn't anything else I could do. But I stopped and she said, Bless your heart, bless your heart. Now, when somebody from Texas says, I was just gonna say, bless your heart, it means you're a mess. And when they <laughs> say it twice, it means you're a big mess. So she leans in and she says, Krista, there's only so far I can take you if you don't have the right equipment. And I knew she was right. 
I took her advice and I bought a piano that could play itself because I was worried if I invested and I stopped lessons, I'd have a piano that was just sitting there. So it worked out. But when I talk to customers, and I hear the cool things they want to do and where they want tech to take them. I think sometimes when they have old servers that they, we can't get them where they want to go if they don't have the right equipment. So modernizing their infrastructure is important because old servers waste time, they waste space, they waste power, they don't have the latest security, they don't have the latest management tools, and it's hard to keep the software, the old software, the old OSs maintained. So the case for refresh has never been stronger. I love that. Also, you deserve that nice piano. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, You're going to have to play for us next time we do a launch. I'll have I'm it expecting... play for you. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think that's, that's a great way to think about it with the piano because, it again, analogy. that it could play itself. And when you think about it, kind of the third tenant, John, is really around automate. And I think when you look at that, you don't want downtime of your piano and you want efficiencies the same way people don't want downtime or have inefficient servers because, again, there's, that's a lot of waste, that's cost, that's a lot of other stuff. Help us understand kind of automation and how AI is playing a role in that yeah, as yeah. well. I wish I could extend the piano metaphor further, but I, I have no <laughs> musical talent, here, so is, no, yeah. nothing well, exactly. <laughs> um, but automation, I mean, it really is key, right? And when you think about the market, you know, everything is becoming more fragmented. Customers are being asked to do more with less. You know, in the best case, they've got the same budget but have to do way more work. They have to introduce AI workloads on top of everything else they've been doing for years. And the only way to realistically do that is to automate tasks. And luckily, we've got a great tool that really helps with that. And Krista mentioned HPE Compute Ops Management earlier, uh, what we call COM internally for short, because I stumble over those words. Uh, but COM really allows you to take the benefits from ILO and extend that up into the cloud. And the beauty there is that we extend that security proposition as well, where you are always connecting from the server to the cloud, never the other way around, so that connection is secured you're then able to manage your systems wherever they live in your environment. So that could be in a data center, that could be spread across 100 different retail locations, you know, anywhere in the world. And so it allows you to look at that as a fleet, right, instead of as individual systems that someone has to go touch. Not only can you update your systems, make sure that you're tracking their health, uh, you can manage security as a policy, you can look at energy consumption and carbon footprint. We've just introduced some new features around actually taking AI models and providing insights into how we uh, project that your energy usage will happen over the next six months. So you can make proactive decisions wow. around ESG, yeah. uh, really cool. plan out your power environment, because we all know power is not getting cheaper. Yep. Um, so it gives you that kind of capability to think ahead in your environment. We've also introduced some new features around a global map, so you can see where your systems live in the world. Uh, and then the really great thing that I'm excited about sharing is some of the uh, other AI insight driven work that we've introduced with Gen 12. But you really need to see that to believe it. Well, I, I think what better thing to do then is let's see it. Let's, let's take a look. Absolutely. HP Compute Ops Management helps you secure and automate your distributed server environment. I'm excited to announce that we're enhancing automated operational processes with the use of AI-driven insights for increased productivity. You'll benefit from faster mean time resolution, improved infrastructure and operational continuity compliance, and overall reduced operational cost. This first instance of our AI insights capability helps organizations improve energy efficiency by forecasting power usage and carbon emissions with the added ability to set thresholds to control costs and emissions. We are evolving our sustainability reporting feature to provide predictive insights into energy consumption and carbon emissions of servers deployed within your environment. And threshold alerts can be set to avoid overages. And you will get a notification when a threshold is within sight or breached so you can take the appropriate action. HP ILO, the foundation of our server management, collects data from up to the past six months and provides predictive server utilization analytics. Our predictive costs and emissions modeling is based on an open source AI model. All features of HP Compute Ops Management are now available for server systems from Gen 10 through to Gen 12. Wow, that was great. And I, I think again, 
AI in action, where, you know, again, so many people are struggling with use cases for AI, but that is seems like just such a powerful way to really apply that and help people manage and automate their servers. It's yeah, really good. no, absolutely. I mean, you can, you can sense the energy from that demo video, from sitting next to you, being here at HQ, the buzz on campus. It is a day here, folks. Thank you all for letting us come hang out. Krista, I got to ask you, you've been working on this. You've been a part of HPE for a while. You're at the crux of the innovation here. Mm -hmm. I know it's probably hard to say, but what are you most excited about today? Well, I'm most excited about what this is going to help us deliver to customers because I feel like we've made advances in so many different areas that are going to help them. So security, adding those multi layers of protection mm -hmm. and that future proofing that we're providing on top of an already strong security offering that we have. And then when it comes to the performance and efficiency, I mean that ratio seven to one and 65% savings, what I didn't tell you is we're still shipping that Gen 10 server. So we're shipping that for just a little bit longer. So this isn't something we stopped shipping years ago. So right. to get those advancements in this time frame, you know, so, you know, it's just really compelling. And then when it comes to automation, uh, you heard Justin, and it's really exciting what we're going to be able to help uh, deliver with insights because when it comes to managing your servers, it's all about what you can see and when you can see it so that you can act when you need to. Uh, now, one thing I want to say is, you know, budgets can be a concern. So one thing we have to help is we have financial flexibility, leveraging HPE financial services. And it's so funny because a lot of people don't know all the different things that they can do to help um, them free up the capacity to yeah. buy the infrastructure that they need. Uh, and then we also have HPE VM Essentials, which will be supported on ProLiant Gen 12 servers. So that helps with reducing cost and complexity in virtualized environments. There isn't anything you're not doing with this announcement. We had all the bases covered. <laughs> <laughs> you really did. You know, I could sit here and hang out with you two all afternoon, but unfortunately, we are running close to time. John and Krista, thank you so much for coming to hang out. Thanks for coming to see us. We're going to have to, I, I cannot wait to sit down with you and hear some of these customer stories when it's out in the wild and people are seeing that benefit. Those ratios you mentioned, yeah. whoo, it's going to be really You'll awesome. You'll have to come back. <laughs> Twist our arm. Yeah. Twist our arm. Bless your heart. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But but truly, I mean, I love that we covered the tenants, the, the automation here, the optimization, the security. These things all really matter. And, and what I love to hear as someone who's an OG, in hardware land is that it you're you're future proofing the hardware you're not making it so it's futile in a few years you're thinking about quantum you're thinking about AI this this matters it's very clear while you're at the center of the compute universe so thank you all so much and Rob thank you always for bringing the hot takes I, I love it this has been great and you know I, I'm inspired I'm, I'm inspired put it mildly I, I think and I know it's a huge deal uh, I've known Ilo for years, decades, and, and I know that, that this advancement with all of the pieces for automation, security, and optimization is just so key to customers. It's great. I know. It's great. What, yes. a, what a great day. Well, thank you for hanging out, and thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful rock. But don't worry. You can learn more, hear all the deets, and get the speeds and feeds of this announcement at hpe.com slash ProLiant. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.